Hey guys, welcome back to another movie review video. Today we're going to be looking at Coco, a 2017 Disney Pixar animated film. It's about Dia de los Muertos, which if you don't know is the Day of the Dead, celebrated in Mexico mostly, as well as like the importance of family and remembering each other. And also the there's very much hints of the importance of in individuality uh, throughout the film. But before we hop into the actual review of the film, uh, be sure to leave a like if you liked and subscribe for more videos like this. I will try to keep up with this pattern of releasing every Tuesday and Thursday. We'll see how you know life goes and also live streams on Friday. So be sure to stay tuned for those. If you like watching live streams, I usually will be gaming. I don't really have anything else that I would do during the live streams. If you have recommendations, I can totally look into doing whatever you guys want me to be live streaming, I guess. But with that, let's hop right in. The movie begins from a really beautiful point of view of the main character, Miguel, telling the history of his family through changing papel picados or uh, paper banners. And it's probably one of the most beautiful ways I've seen a backstory told. I feel like it's one of those show not tell kind of a things that a lot of movies will do incorrectly where you know they'll tell the story but won't really show anything or they'll do like flashbacks and stuff. But this does it in a very artsy, beautiful way where the backstory is told via the papel picado. But the story goes that Imelda, Miguel's great-great-grandmother, was married to a musician and they had a daughter named Coco. And through means unknown to Miguel, the musician left town and never returned. And in spite of the musician, Imelda banned all music and anything to do with music from the household and became a shoemaker and passed that down throughout her generations of their family. And the movie takes place on Dia de los Muertos, which for those of you who don't know, is the Day of the Dead, a Mexican celebration of families, generations, and remembering people who have passed on. It's kind of like Halloween, but better in my opinion. But we see that Miguel is telling his, his story to a uh, mariachi and the mariachi tries to convince Miguel to, you know, seize his moment. So says the town's main mascot person who was a musician, Ernesto de la Cruz, who was famous for a lot of different songs. Now, this movie has some of the best music I've seen come out of any Disney Pixar film ever. Uh, this movie and Encanto both have just genuinely beautiful music. I can't play any of the music here or I will immediately get a copyright strike. And I, I don't want to do that to my channel because it's trying to grow. It's it's doing really good and I don't want to do that. But I cannot recommend enough for you guys to go and watch the movie yourself and experience it if you haven't already. It is a truly beautiful experience. But eventually Miguel's grandmother shows up and stops him from being able to play music. And he gets scolded a little bit. We see how he leaves his grandma at the ofrenda where his grandmother shows all of the generations and explains why they do it and he leaves while she's in the middle of talking and he goes up to a secret little nook that he has where he practices his music which i'd like to cut in here again and say you know it's kind of crazy to think that miguel had taught himself how to play music off of the movie and uh music videos i guess that he had stored away from ornesto del cruz's uh like whole collection and he had his own you know a friend up there for cruz but to keep this summary a little bit short we're gonna move on through some shenanigans and a few other things that lead up to this point miguel talks to his grandmother again at the ofrenda where she confronts him and tells him that he's going to be working in the shop making the shoes and stuff even though he really doesn't want to and it's very clear that he personally does not enjoy the act of anything to do with shoes but because it's a family tradition it's kind of being pushed upon him to continue the family tradition of being a shoemaker and that's where dante the dog that's been following around miguel pretty much the entirety of the movie he started eating some of the food that was left out on the ofrenda and when miguel went to stop dante from eating it the top picture that had imelda and coco and the musician on it fell and broke that's where Miguel discovers that the musician had the same exact guitar that Ernesto de la Cruz has. When he discovers this, he realizes that 
his great great grandfather was Ernesto de la Cruz. So he confronts his family and he says, I'm gonna be a musician. And then that's when they discover his like little secret hidey hole where he kept all of his stuff and they pull it all out. Specifically, his grandmother destroys everything and specifically his guitar. So he leaves to go to the Dia de los Muertos talent show. While he's there, nobody offers him a guitar and then he comes upon his great great grandfather's statue and sees the tagline, seize your moment. So he decides to go to De La Cruz's grave and steal his guitar. But in doing so, he is cursed because he, he stole from the dead instead of gave to the dead, which is the purpose of Dia de los Muertos. And in doing so, he basically kills himself, but not really because, he, you know, he's cursed. So he's still alive, but he's not quite dead. And his family finds him and they escort him to the other side. And this is when we get to first meet the very interesting and complex character, Hector, who I will get into later. But eventually we find out that Imelda can't cross over because when Miguel went to the talent show, he took the photo from the top of the ofrenda. And that's when he meets up with Imelda. She gives him her blessing to go back to the land of the living on one condition that he would never play music. And as soon as he gets back, he grabs the guitar to go play music and is sent right back to the land of the dead. And I like to stop right here. I didn't mention it when it first popped up, but the animation and style that the land of the dead has is phenomenal. It's so beautiful. It's colorful. It's bright. It's pretty much anything you would expect it to be. And I truly love what they did with it. There's so many different small little blink and you miss it skulls that you can find throughout where like two trains will line up and there's a skull or whatever it happens to be. And it's just one of those fun things to watch and experience when you're looking for those kinds of things. But anyways, he Miguel decides to leave because he's not going to accept a blessing where he can't play music. So he decides to leave and try and get the blessing of De La Cruz. And that's where he runs into Hector, who was telling an officer that he knows De La Cruz and can get him a backstage ticket to see him. Miguel convinces Hector to take him to De La Cruz. And on the way, uh, Hector paints up Miguel's face to look like a skeleton because, because he's not fully dead. So he still has the face of a, a human living boy, but his hands have faded to the bones. And so they move on to the rehearsal area where De La Cruz's sunrise show rehearsal is happening. And that's where Miguel meets Frida Kahlo, a pretty famous Mexican painter who's mostly known for her eccentric everything. And it's kind of funny because they really play on that and, and like her highly interpreted dance act thing. But anyways, we find out how Hector dies and it was on, uh, it was from food poisoning. And we get this kind of touching scene where Hector is talking to Miguel and trying to convince him that being a musician isn't everything, especially when it means sacrificing your family. And Miguel really isn't having it because he spent his entire life being told that musicians are bad and that's all he's ever wanted to be. So in order to get to De La Cruz, they, decide to sign up for a talent show that is happening down in the Day of the Dead. But in order to perform, they need a guitar. So they go over to the slum area of the Land of the Dead. And that's where we meet Chicharron, who uh, is being forgotten. The last person who remembered him in the Land of the Living is dying. And so he's having his final death, but not before we see uh, Hector sing a song to him. And I love this part because there's, the original lyrics to the song are vastly different than what he sings because you know there's a kid present and it's not a kid friendly song so <laughs> if you're gonna watch the movie for anything i would watch it for that scene specifically because it's great but we see what happens when somebody is forgotten or they have the final death and they disappear from the, the land of the dead and that's where hector tells miguel that he is being forgotten he's probably not going to make it past this Dia de los Muertos. Miguel promises to take his picture back to the land of the living and give it to whoever his family members are, so or put it on their ofrenda so he won't be forgotten. 
Miguel enters the competition and decides to sing uh, Un Poco Loco instead of, you know, Remember Me, who's, which is the most famous uh, De La Cruz song. And personally, I think Un Poco Loco is so much better lyrically and just sounds so much better out of all of the songs. It's probably my favorite one. Once again, can't really show you the music uh, to the, but it is what it is. That's where Hector finds out that uh, De La Cruz isn't Miguel's only family, and so he tries to convince Miguel to go back to his other family. In which case, Miguel runs away in order to meet up with De La Cruz. And we have another touching moment where we see Imelda actually open up to Miguel and tell him that she loves music and still loves music, but she can't accept it because of the fact that her husband left in order to search for fame in the light of music. So she decided to cut it off and that's the whole reason behind it and everything. But we then cut to Miguel trying to figure out a way to get up there and he gets up there through hiding with the band that actually did win the competition. And when he makes it up to the area where De La Cruz is in order to get his attention, he starts singing a song that is currently playing on the walls. And I have to say, De La Cruz is a very pretentious person because, I mean, on every single wall, there's either a picture of him or something playing of what he did in his life. And that's a bright red flag for me. But anyways, he gets the attention of De La Cruz. They meet and he tells him that he's his grandson and they have this interesting scene where they talk to each other and figure out how that works and stuff. And uh, at the end of the night, he asks for the blessing of De La Cruz. And that's when Hector shows up and we see Hector confront Miguel because he promised to take his picture back up to the land of the living and De La Cruz confronts Hector about the whole shenanigans. And that's when we learn that De La Cruz killed Hector and stole all of his songs. So the only reason that he had succeeded was because he stole all of those songs and he made the excuse of he seized his moment which is a constant twisted phrase that he has used throughout his entire life and afterlife because of the abilities to step over people and use people and kill people in order to succeed in both the living and the dead. Miguel very understandably upset by this is also thrown away with Hector and that's where we learn that Hector is actually the great great grandfather of Miguel which was a beautiful twist I really liked that twist it made a lot of sense because in a lot of ways Hector and Miguel look very similar uh, and I pretty much figured that was what the twist was gonna be until the very uh, when Hector first showed up but that doesn't change the fact that it was still a very good uh, twist to the plot anyways Imelda shows up rescues both Hector and Miguel they meet up with the rest of the family and Miguel and Hector tell Imelda the whole nine yards about De La Cruz killing Hector and him having his picture. So they do this whole heist mission with the help of Frida to go and rescue the picture from De La Cruz. And then we see how good of a singer Imelda is as she performs in order to keep her cover kind of a thing. And it's a really beautiful and touching scene where we get to see Imelda and Hector fall back in love with each other as they come to an understanding that uh, one did not leave because they wanted to, but because they were forced to through death. And it was a really beautiful scene and I loved it. And then we get to see as uh, De La Cruz gets a hold of Miguel and tries to kill him, but clever as they are, the other uh, members of his family record the whole thing and broadcast it to the whole uh, land of the dead and everybody sees what happens. But in the process of Miguel almost dying again, uh, he loses the picture of Hector and has to be rushed to the land of the living in order to make Coco remember her papa. We get this really touching and beautiful scene. The only part of the movie where I almost teared up. I didn't, I didn't cry, but I almost did. Where Coco retells stories about her father and what happened to him and how they sung songs together. It was a really beautiful scene. We fast forward one year into the future and we see that Coco passed away, but because she told the story of Hector to the rest of the family, they're able to remember him through that memory. And we see that the entire 
family has readopted music into their lives and we see that Miguel is singing a song and Hector plays along with him but you know and ghost form and it's a really touching and beautiful ending to a movie <laughs> So I think I'm going to start off the review section with uh, the animation. I like starting off with something simple like that. I think they did a phenomenal job. There are a couple of scenes where it's a close up on somebody's face and it has like little fuzzy hairs or like they keep it cartoony but give it realistic aspects that I truly think are phenomenal and I think they do a really good job with it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the Land of the Dead is animated beautifully. There are so many different tiny little Easter eggs or tiny little skulls or stuff that you could find if you rewatch that whole set. You could probably rewatch that whole section like three or four times and not be able to see everything that you need to see. I love how the beginning of the movie starts with the animation starting in Papel Picados and how it really emphasizes the passage of time from the beginning of the story which was Imelda and Hector and Coco to where they are now. It's beautiful. I, I think this is one of the most well animated Pixar films that has ever come out of Pixar. Moving on to another thing that I really and truly thought was done beautifully was the voice acting and the singing. Some of the best singing I've ever heard. I love the singing. I love the mixture of Spanish and English. I love how well it is voiced by each character and i love how they released you know the entire soundtrack both in english and in spanish um when it came out but that's just a personal thing um and i think another really beautiful and touching thing behind it behind this movie is the story and the message behind it which is a combination of seeking individuality and understanding that people are going to be people and you can't really tie them to family values because people are different people grow people change people are unique but also that even though people are unique and people crave individuality they are all still a part of the same family and that everybody still loves everybody no matter what no matter how different they are and the meaning of acceptance and the meaning of the importance of acceptance and the importance of understanding are very very clear messages throughout this entire film and I think that's something that everybody can take home. Now, for my score for this movie, I'm gonna give it a solid nine and a half out of 10. I don't really, I can't really think of anything that I could improve upon when it comes to the movie itself or the story or the animation, to be honest. I don't think it fully deserves a 10 out of 10, but it's still a very, very beautiful and touching and heartwarming film that I recommend anybody and everybody to watch even if you don't speak Spanish even if you don't really like animation or that kind of a thing it is still a beautiful film that you should totally pay homage to now with that being said I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope that you subscribe so you can see more videos like this and like the video if you really feel like you liked it also let me know in the comments what you thought of the film and what your favorite song was from this movie with that I think I'll see you guys in the next video Peace.